Hey beloved, this is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. This is day seven of Vlogmas, 12 days of Christmas with Krista Pettiford. So I am so excited. I have made it through seven days. Do not hate on the fact that I have on the same clothes. I am batching. But anyway, enough of that. I'm back with another word and we are doing Isaiah 9. And if you are just now joining me, I am doing Vlogmas. I'm wrapping the gift of Christ and I'm sharing one of my favorite things of Christmas in each post. And if you stay with me till the end and you make it all the way through the 12 favorite things and let me know your favorite things and you respond about my question about Christ, then you could be the person who wins the gift of Amazon card or a Starbucks card. All you have to do is tag me in all your comments and then I will know the person that gets through them all at the um, end of the 12 days will get a gift card sent to me from me via to your email so that you can have an electronic link. Um, and so we're unwrapping Christ and what it meant for the gift to be given. And so um, today we're going back to Isaiah 9 verse 6 and it says for unto us a child was born and unto us a son is given. And so let's talk about the son that is given. The rest of that verse that I've been sharing all these days says and the government shall be on his shoulders and then it goes to his name shall be wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace and you can go back and read those. So I'm backtracking because I want to deal with child which i did in six that he was a child was born and now i'm talking about a son is given so in john 3 the verse that everyone knows 316 so for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life so unto us a son was given but let me go a little bit deeper to romans Eight in verse 29 and it says I'll start at verse 28 and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren Moreover, whom he predestined, those he also called, and whom he called, those these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. I just love reading the word, but let me go back to verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined, pre-planned, pre-ordained to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren to be conformed to his son to the image of his son so when you are conforming something you are shaping it there's a transformation of our mind but there's a conforming in the image of the to the image of the son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren so let me let me even go back a little bit further so um, unto us a son was given. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. And then it says he was the firstborn among many brethren. So what does that mean? That when he gave his son, he reaped a family. When God gave his son so that we who believe would not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is entering to relationship with the Father and the Son, John 17, 3. And so he becomes the firstborn among many brethren, brethren being uh, sons and daughters. And so he's the firstborn and then we are conformed to this image of him. We are made in his likeness. We are shaped in our character and our identity, our personality and our obedience to God. And we are conformed to this image of God, of the Son of God. And him being the firstborn, as I said, God 
wanted a family. He wanted to restore people onto him in relationship. And so when he gave his son, he knew that he would reap. When Jesus fulfilled that prophecy, it was so that he would not be the only son. He was first the only begotten son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then he reaped the benefits of having more sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. And so Jesus came and fulfilled this prophecy. So Christmas is so much more than, it is about what Jesus gave to us. It's about the gifts that he has given to us and him coming and a son being born and a child being given. There's so much that happened when Jesus comes. And I decided and got willing when we get to um, Easter, or resurrection weekend, we'll talk about the things that happened when he left and what it meant for him to die on the cross. These are the things that it did mean, but he came and fulfilled these, but then there's even more things that because he went away, and some of those we've talked about already, but there's so much that Jesus came to fulfill. But when he was given, this was one of those things, the son being given. And then we get on into the other part of that verse, which I've already done the videos on. And his name shall be called and he, the government shall be on his shoulders. So he was given, he was born and then he was given as a sacrifice, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world so that we could become sons and daughters. When God gave his son, it was in sacrifice. It was to be slaughtered like a lamb. Um, for our sins, for the sins of the world, the Lamb of God. And so he gave him and Jesus willingly went. He said, I come in the volume of the book as it, as it is written of me to do thy will. And then in the garden, when it got close, he said, Father, if it be possible, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He addressed God as Father and he is the firstborn among many brethren. But he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When was the last time that you said, not my will, but thy will be done? When was the last time that you gave yourself, that you forgave someone, or that you gave something that you didn't want to give that was precious to you so that it could help someone else the way that Jesus gave himself so that all of the world, whoever would believe on him, would not perish but have everlasting life. You could never, I could never give something that big and that great. But when was the last time you gave something that hurt? When was the last time that you wrestled with God over something that you wanted to hold on to that God told you, you have to give if you're going to go on, if people are going to be blessed, if you're going to get it right, if you're going to break through? When was the last time you gave? Have you ever, let's not talk about last time, have you ever? Sometimes those are one in a lifetime, once in a lifetime things, happenings, but events. But let me know, or once in a great while, God, when he asked for something that big, like he asked Abraham for his son, Isaac. Abraham was willing to give and then the Lord provided for himself a lamb. When was the last time? When was there ever a time? Has there ever been a time when God asked you for something that you wanted to hold up, hold on to? I can think of a time in my life. Of course, it wasn't as big as that. But when he's asked you to let go of a relationship or I remember writing a book. I was just sharing this today. And I really wanted to put this book out and I had the name and I had shared it with people and I had the title and I had everything ready. I had written the book and the Lord said, no, I don't want you to release that book. And I really didn't want to let it go. I had labored over it and I had to surrender this book. But the truth, the beautiful thing about God is when we give him something, he always gives us something back better. And when I laid down that book truly and completely, it took a while to get there. And sometimes it does. God allows us to work through surrendering and sacrificing things to him. But as long as we act in obedience and do all that we know to do, just like Jesus, he had to 
he he prayed until he sweat drops of blood so he said he came in the volume of the book as it was written of him to do the will of the father but he still said god if there's any way because i am in this flesh and i know what awaits me that this cup can pass from me if you can do something else you know when it gets down to the wire if you could do something else but he said nevertheless and so that is the pressing in where we have sometime we we surrender we give our yes but then we have to conform ourselves we have to submit our flesh we have to push ourselves into it because the 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 spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and so we have to press our way into the will of God, the obedience of God, the sacrifice and the surrender that it takes to bear fruit and to break through. And so when was the last time you had to give something to God? Um, did it come easily or was it hard? Back to the book. I didn't want to give and it took me layers. But when I finally gave it to him, he gave me another book to write that has been a blessing to many women. A call to God's daughters to step into his lab love acceptance and beauty based on the book of Ruth and with that book I launched a conference God led me to launch a conference and a podcast and many things from that book but I wanted to write the other book it wasn't until I laid that down when Jesus laid down his life he became the firstborn among many and so answer that in the comments and then this time, I want to ask you about, did I talk about, I talked about sending gifts, sending cards. Oh, well, let's talk about gifts. That's what I wanted to talk about, gifts. Do you ask people to what you want, what they want from you? When you get like your kids or your significant other gifts, do you find out what they want and try and get that? Or do you just get things that you think they need or pick gifts for them? Mm. Let me do another confession, a mom confession. So when my kids were younger, they would get me things, and that's so sweet. But I always ask them what they wanted. The tables have turned, right? It's so funny because I always found out what they wanted and tried to get it or similar or the best I can. A lot of times I was on the money and got them exactly what they wanted, the best I could afford, um, you know, to get them. So if it was a phone or whatever. But like we ain't we ain't getting no you know million dollar houses but you know trying to get them what they wanted and so um but as they got older and they could get me gifts it'd be like I don't even like this so you got me something it wasn't that it was not nice or thoughtful it was just that I don't like that and I would always ask my mom what what do you want mom what can i bless you with what can i get you so i can get her something that she wants and that she's going to use and be happy with because i want to see the joy and the smile on her face right and so after a while of them being adults i was like listen you guys i'm going to tell you what i want and you guys can get it or something similar because i have things that i'm just putting in my closet these you know coats and all these things that you're buying me I don't wear and I don't mean to be rude I am thankful but I don't and I wouldn't do this with everybody but ask me what I want now it's flipped because now I buy them things that I think they need so I have four adult kids so I buy them really really nice name brand pajamas and slippers and stuff like that for their for Christmas because it's like hmm I got tired of trying to figure it out so I try and make their birthday gift the big one but and when they even got older and they buy things that they want I either cook their favorite meal or take them out to a really nice dinner with all of us whichever one they want a lot of times they want me to cook their favorite meal childhood meal or whatever so that's what I do that's special for them and then everybody gets pajamas and all of that they're like really this is getting old I'm like you will never be without pajamas uh good nice warm pajamas but um so it's flipped where i used to get exactly what they wanted and let them get me whatever they wanted now it's like no 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 because you're wasting things and i'm not going to wear it i may even give it away and give it to somebody because it's not something i would use even if it's like a nice purse or something if it's not my style i'm very particular and so they know that and so it's like okay let's ask her what she wants and then um for them, it's like, I'm not asking y'all. First of all, you guys 
are very you guys have expensive taste and you guys are adults and you guys can buy yourself that stuff so i'm going to get you guys what i want to get you so that's my story you get to know a little bit about me and let me know in the comments do if you ask people what they want um, and you tell people what you want or if you just never tell people and you like oh just get me whatever or you get people whatever so how do you do that let me know am i wrong <laughs> let me know too okay god bless you until next time day seven we're out